Hello, ladies and gentlemen. A very quick run through, just covering a few questions have been asked recently regarding installing and getting up and running on LSPDF. Are. Now, first off, obviously you need to download LSPDFR, so download that. At the moment we're on point 0.2 beta. Now when you download LSPDFR, you get all these files in there. Now, these files also include Rage plugin hook. I'll come back to that in a second. Now, basically what you, do, what you want to do is select all those and drag and drop them in there. Now the next thing you need to do is go to ragepluginhook.net download the latest version of Rage Plugin Hook because the version that comes with LSPDFR currently is an old version and won't work on the latest versions of the game. So when you've downloaded the latest version of Rage Plugin Hook, again, select all the files, click, hold, drag and drop, basically. Drag and drop those into your main executable directory. Now Windows should ask you if you want to overwrite the files, like that. So you just click replace the file in the destination. So that's LSPDFR installed and the latest version of Rage Plugin Hook. Now a quick run through some other stuff for those who are new to this, this whole thing. Now we've got an LSPDFR folder here. And inside there are some sounds and stuff for LSPDFR itself. And we have a plugins folder. Now in here, all these are Rage Hook plugins. And when you start the game by Ragehook, these plugin files here will get loaded directly by Ragehook. Now this folder here, LSPDFR, these plugins inside this folder get loaded by LSPDFR. Okay. So for example, callouts and stuff like that, arrest manager, sort of directly LSPDFR related stuff goes in this folder, plugins slash LSPDFR. So as you can see, there appear to be two of everything along here. Subtle difference is, one's the actual plugin file, uh, example here, policeradio.dll, or dill as I call them, and the other one is a configuration setting file. A bit bigger. There we go, configuration settings. It's basically a text file, so you can open that with any text editor like notepad, so we'll open that up. And in here contains the various things like keys and stuff. So you've got player name there, you can enter that in so you can change that to whatever your name is, so on and so forth. And you can change the type of cars and pads that are called for various call outs, and things like that. And also your key bindings here. You can change your key bindings. Now this is pretty straightforward because you know, you want a barrier, J, so on and so forth, left, left control key, it's all fairly self-explanatory. Before changing any of the key bindings though, check inside either the README or the INI file itself and make sure you know what to put in there, because it may just be as simple as the letter J, it may need a hex code or something like that, and often within the INI file there'll be a link to a list of the key codes that you can use for this particular file and this can vary between different mods so check that out before you change anything. One thing I would suggest is have a backup if you're going to make any changes if you're going to sit down and go through and, and change your keys and stuff have a backup so you can always revert back to how it was before you started tinkering. Now the other thing I wanted to show you was the location of log files and stuff for when things go wrong. Now here we've got ASI loader is a text document but in here this will basically show I mean I've got open 4 I've got simple trainer and I've got snow mod currently installed as you can see this this is basically as complex as this log gets and that just shows that those things have actually loaded so that's what ASI, ASI loader script does now another log file is DX in my case DXGI now it might not necessarily be called that that's the log file for the DirectX injection tool, which uh, Ragehook can use, because it can hook into DirectX, and that's how it gives you that screen overlay with the console and so on and so forth. So if you have problems with that, this might be a place to look. This bit here is the key thing where it says info, because you can just spin down that, and I imagine it must have some errors at some point. I've got some warnings there, look. So it kind of stands out a little more. If it says info, it's probably fine. 
it says worn or error, that's probably a bad thing. Next one, open for log. If everything in the inside here is fine, that shows that it's loaded all the archives okay. It doesn't tell you that what's in those archives is okay. It just tells you that it loaded them okay. Now we have rage plugin hook log. I've probably got loads of errors in here. Let's see if I can find So I'll spin down to the bottom. Uh, when you first open it up, your oldest stuff is at the top. This is quite a lot of information. Start a new log. Here we go. Start a new log. The rage hook goes on to load the various plugins here. See quite a few. And then it loads LSPDFR. And then LSPDFR loads all the plugins that you saw in the plugins slash LSPDFR folder. So this is the sort of level in the log where you're going to start to see errors if you've got a problem with a call out or some other LSPDFR related stuff. Now this here, we've got an error look. Um, when I book on duty, I get my ped sorted, my officer sorted, I then go into the garage and select a car. Now I get through so many cars, I think it's at the unmarked Buffalo in the stock game. Uh, for some reason, Strobe's mod either doesn't support it or I need to update a newer version. And every time, Strobe's mod will crash. And that is the error right there. So again, if you get a call out issue, uh, that would probably show up in this point here. Yeah, well, this was basically, hopefully, a brief overview how to adjust keys, how to change key bindings in LSPDFR, where to put callouts and stuff, what the different folders are, and so on and so forth. Uh, important things are always read the README file. If you've got space, make a backup, because then it's easy to restore from a backup. A lot easier than re-downloading and re-modifying and so on and so forth. Thank you for watching. Hopefully that's guided you a little bit better and made you feel a little bit more confident. It can look quite daunting, but the more you, you play about stuff, adjust things, the more you'll get to know how things work. Uh, so stick with it and uh, enjoy.